Hello everybody and welcome to Construct 2 tutorial on how to use Node.js and the WS WebSockets library um, in order to create a server that you can connect to using Construct 2 and the WebSocket plugin that is provided by Sierra. Now what we're going to have to do first is we're going to have to download and install Node.js. It's kind of an of course sort of thing. So let's save that and run it. So boom, let's go ahead and get this. All right, so we're going to just kind of install. There's really no reason to change anything in particular. We can just let it go about its business. So we got to wait till it's done. And it is finished. Woohoo, yay! There was much rejoicing. All right, so next what we need to do is we need to get the WS WebSocket library. So let's go ahead and we're going to copy this from the front page. This is github.com slash websockets slash WS. I'll be putting both links in the description so you don't have to worry about that. And on a side note, this is for this uh, tutorial is pretty much just for Windows only, just because Construct 2 is a Windows only software currently. So yeah, yeah, yeah. As I flip my hands around. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this little line, and this goes into our command line. So what we're gonna do now? First, what we need to do, actually, sorry, for this, once we have this open, we actually need to create a nice shiny little folder for our project to reside, or sorry, for the server to reside in. So we're going to create a new folder. We're going to call this test serve uh, underscore server. Use underscores, not spaces. That's generally good practice. We're using your command line uh, commands. Anyway, um, so we're going to CD. We're going to do uh, it dot dot. Yeah, OK, good. I'm remembering my command line. I know I could have gone to the top level directory, but oh well. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go CD, and then we're going to do CD. We're going to do test server we're going to go to a little test server and then what we're going to do is we're going to write paste and we can paste this little line of code so we're going to boop going to boop that and it should all of it should go just fine i believe i honestly don't know exactly what all of these are but so far as far as i know they are only of course they're only warnings not legitimate errors that will prevent us from using the library so we don't have to worry about this we are now done and so what we need to do is we need to create a JS file here now I personally like using brackets dot I brackets or brackets from brackets dot IO and um, because this is a very nice code editor and it's built I believe mostly or primarily with uh, web development in mind so it's got a nice little uh, JS um, uh, code editing thing I God, I'm losing losing my terminology as I go along anyway so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna create a new and this is my this is my other um, this is the one project that I've been working on but so what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually gonna go back to the website and we are just going to pretty much copy and paste the server example that they have because it's pretty much just all done for us and we don't I mean there's really we could just reuse all this code right here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna save Actually, we're going to save as because we need to get this directly inside of our test server folder. So we're going to call this test server. Why is someone talking so loud in the background? Test server.js. All right, so once we've got all this in our nice little JS file, what we're going to do is we're going to go over to Construct2, and now we need to start making a project that's actually going to be able to connect. So we're going to create just a little empty project, and I'm going to size down the layout size. I don't know why the layout size is always that weirdo default that makes no sense, but I don't really care too much right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert an object. Now what we need is a little text box, not a text box, but a text object. That way we can record some of what are the responses from our server are. So what we're going to do is we're just going to size this out. Doesn't matter particular, we can keep it 12, just erase the text. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a little button so we can have something to connect to and then disconnect from. Actually, we don't really need a disconnect button because we're just creating a game. Or we're Actually, we don't really need a disconnect button in this case. We're not going to really get into that at the moment. But this is just going to be a basic connection too. So what we're going to do here is we can just leave this as an OK button. It doesn't particularly matter. But um, yeah, now we need to make an event. So when our button is clicked, we're, oh, sorry. I almost forget this all the time until I go to actually add something. We need a new object in our object types. We need the web socket. 
So now we can actually add a WebSocket action to connect. Now what we're going to be doing is we need to connect to the local host, literally just this on port, I think 8080 is the default that their example server uses. Now this is fine, so I'll find in dandy. Um, when we're starting a server and we're also running the client on the server, we're just going to be entering localhost. So for all intents and purposes, as long as you're testing, as long as you're running the client and hosting the server on the same machine, you just use URL localhost and then whatever port that you have specified right here. So it could be 8080 or it could be a host, <laughs> host of all sorts of other port numbers that are available on your machine. So we don't need a protocol. We're just going to click done. And so once our button is there, so what we're going to do is now we are going to add a event. So on opened, when our WebSocket connection is opened, what we need to do is we need to log this. So we need to append text. So what I usually do is just let's go with connection opened and then we do an and or sorry, just an and new line. And this is so we create another line which new text will be entered or sorry, appended to in the text box if we have more text. So then what we do is in the case of an error, so on error, we're just going to copy paste this down. If you control and drag, you can drag a new copy into it. And for some reason, there's still a few glitches in the UI and in construct to that add or that will wind up duplicating the things that you're trying to copy and paste. It's really odd because it like selects more than one, but that's a side note. This is fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to just going to say connection error. That'll be good enough. You can also log specific errors or at least the error details. Um, but we're just going to do this because this is, this is fine for a basic project. So then I believe this, this should all be enough. Now what we need to do is we need to actually run our test server. So what we're going to need to do is we are going to we're going to create a new and we are need we basically we need a CMD file. So we need something that is going to invoke node to run our server. So whatever the server name is, we go do node space and then test underscore ser oops sorry test underscore server dot js i forgot the capital t why did i do that all right so this is good enough and then we're going to go back to our folder our test server folder and we're going to call this run server server dot cmd boom all right so now it's here and we're just going to do this all right and we can see it's running if it hasn't given us any errors we can also log um just a line that says something like server started if we would like but that's another uh, just sort of optional things when you're creating very basic connection, trying to get this all set up. So now what we're going to do is we're going to run layout and we're going to press OK and connection opened. And there we go. We have successfully opened a connection to a WebSocket server using Construct2 and Node.js and the WS library. So that's about it. So we're done for now, but there are many other things we can do. As you can see, I've really sort of fleshed out a very basic server as well as a game loop on the server and some different key logging and such. In the future, I'll probably make a few more tutorials so you guys can get a sense for how to design something like a basic game that use it, that interacts with the server and maybe and or maybe a login server. And for that, I would like to learn myself personally how to use MongoDB because that is a database software that also comes with a Node.js driver. So we can actually fetch and save information such as player statistics, um, username, password, and such, and we can make it also a login server. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys all next time.